Good morning and happy Saturday to you. My name is James and I am your U.S. racing expert for bettinggods.com. Uh, free betting tips from expert tipsters. Join Betting Gods today. There are over 120,000 members on bettinggods.com who receive free betting tips daily on, and on sports from horse racing to greyhound racing to football to basketball. Your sport is there, chances are. Sign up today, bettinggods.com. There's even a blog you can check out, uh, member feedback, awesome stuff, bettinggods.com. Uh, super excited to talk to you today about some races at Keeneland. We've got some great stakes action uh, next week to give you an idea of what we have going on. Sa uh, Friday, Saratoga opens up. For those of you that don't know, Saratoga is like the crown jewel of the racing season in the States. Uh, the best horses from around the country typically converge in Saratoga in the summertime. So we're excited to have the racing season start there on Friday. Uh, Saturday, we're going to be handicapping not only some Saratoga races, but racing from Monmouth Park racetrack uh, because they're going to be running their Haskell Stakes. That's their, the big race that they have of the year. Uh, typically, it's not a Kentucky Derby prep, but the way things worked out this year, it will be. So that should be an exciting race as well. Uh, I'm going to get into Keeneland's races today. Uh, there are six grade, six stakes races. Three of them are grade ones. So a lot to cover. Uh, before I get to that, uh, this is a, a new segment on this. I want to start uh, this week. Uh, every once in a while, people make comments in the YouTube uh, videos, and I love that. So thank you. Keep the comments coming. Uh, I'm going to reply to a comment from Simon F. Thank you for commenting, Simon F. You gave a really honest, polite question. So I feel like it deserves an honest, polite answer. And what Simon F. asked was, uh, James, no winners again. It looks like your magic touch has deserted you these last few weeks. Any thoughts on what's going wrong? And uh, at first, as a tipster, as a handicapper who does this professionally and who does this with pride, uh, it, it hurts a little bit to, to hear that, but I, of course I know <laughs> that, it, you know, you're not going to win every day and sometimes you have a tough week or even a couple of weeks, but it kind of made me think as, about what was going on. And I reached out to a couple of my uh, tipster friends, colleagues, and, and just kind of looked around and, and it's not just me really. It, it, on a whole, tipsters, the racing experts are, are taking a bit of a hit. And as I looked into it a little further, I th what's happening is, you know, around the globe, COVID-19 has had a pretty profound impact on the racing industry. Um, horses are, are bred and, and trained and raced with their entire careers based around certain races, around running in certain races. So with a disruption like we had with COVID-19, where training regimens were thrown to the side in order to prepare for later races. The Kentucky Derby that was happening in May that so many horses are bred to target is now happening in September. That throws a monkey wrench in a lot of things. So what horses having off, having time off from racing for months at a time, what happens is that now that they're back racing, the horses that will would have raced typically four or five times by now for the year, are on many occasions making their very first start. And that puts guys like me in a weird spot because <laughs> we are used to having horses this time of year have run a certain, a, a certain amount of time. Um, you know, usually they run three or four times by now. So stick with us, uh, with us experts. We, we have the track record. We know what we're doing, but thanks for your patience out there. And again, Simon F, thanks for the, the great question. Try to answer it as honestly as I can. Uh, let's get into some Keeneland racing tomorrow. Uh, one thing I did notice with this Keeneland card is a lot of the horses that are running on it um, have raced a few times this year. So that's nice to see. And then the more we go on, uh, the more of that, the better the, the handicapping will get on a whole. So I'm going to share my screen as I usually do. We're going to move on to... Oops. Give me one moment because I, I have a lot of data to share with you today. I'll still try to keep it crisp and efficient because I don't like these videos to go on for very long. I don't want to bore anybody. So we're going to start with race two at Keeneland Racetrack. This is 
a six furlong maiden special weight race for two-year-olds. Uh, and the horse that I like is named Snake Doctor. So Snake Doctor is, <laughs> he's actually been working out in company with a horse named Horse Doctor. Of course, why not? Uh, Snake Doctor has got some pretty fast workouts, 47 and two. He was eighth of 76 horses that ran that day. That's what that means. Here he was breezing from the gate. Two, uh, two of 92, super fast workout, just missed the bullet. But uh, that the June 20th work and the June 13th work match up with a horse named Horse Doctor for the same stable. Horse Doctor has a speed figure average of about 84. Uh, he's been in the money five of eight starts and he's won twice. Uh, beyond that, let's clear out some of this info. As we move to the next screen, uh, Horse Doctor's dam, the mom is named Rare Event. Rare Event was a pretty good stakes winner. She, she ran mostly on turf and won mostly on turf, but she did have uh, a dirt win. If I can highlight it here, right here in the Churchill Down surface. So uh, the ability to handle the dirt should definitely be there. Uh, what I probably like most about Snake Doctor is He's a half-brother to the great Improbable, uh, trained by Bob Baffert. So Improbable won his first one, two, three, three races before losing by a neck in the Rebel, a length in the Arkansas Derby, only three lengths in the Kentucky Derby. Improbable has had a very, very good career. Even most recently, on June the 6th, he won the, the Gold Cup at Santa Anita. Uh, super consistent racehorse, over a million dollars earned. So Snake Doctors... A uh, half brother to improbable, and at a morning line odds of eight to one that we see here, you might get more depending on what uh, website service you use. We're going to take a chance with Snake Doctor in race two. Let's clear this out and move on to race three. So, race three is six and a half furlongs on the dirt. The horse that I like here is She Can't Sing. So. She Can't Sing is lined at 12 to 1 here. And I'm going to clear this out very quickly and point you to, before we take a look at She Can't Sing, I want to show you who the, the favorite is. And that's the likely favorite is Crown Jewel, the nine horse, lined at 3 to 1. Uh, Crown Jewel has the early speed. We see a 99 there. Speed figures are in the 80s, uh, which seem to be pretty well above some of the other horses in the race. Oops, I don't want to do that. You have a 68 here, uh, some more 68s down here. So speed figure wise, she's there. If you take a look at the pace though, you have a 99 for Crown Jewel. The pace rating here is 110 for Letters to Bell. Vanilla Black uh, Beanback is 105. What that tells me is that Crown Jewel is going to have company on the lead. Even uh, Nayabeth is a 111 down here. You can kind of see it. So she's going to have some company on the lead, and it looks to be a very fast pace. I'm going to move back to our pick, and we'll show the difference that She Can't Sing has. She has enough pace to stay close where she's an 88, but her closing figure is an 89. Those other horses, including the favorite, don't have a closing figure quite that strong with 89. So that's one reason why we like She Can't Sing. The other thing that I liked about her is Jackie Brian Hernandez has ridden her once. And that one start, she had a speed figure of 87. So by far the best speed figure of her career. Um, sometimes jockeys can kind of, is, can bring that out in a horse. So we like to see that odds of 12 to one. We certainly like to see that. Uh, even the numbers uh, consistency wise, 75, 76, she got a 78 down here, uh, more consistent than some of the others in here, like Tortuga, Tipsy Gal starting to just get underway. So at high odds, we're gonna take a shot with She Can't Sing in this, the third race at Keeneland. We are out. And we're going to move on to the fifth race next. The fifth race is the grade one Madison Stakes. It's for uh, four-year-olds four and up, fillies and mares. 
at seven furlongs on the dirt. And the likely favorite in this race, I'd be pretty shocked if she wasn't the favorite, It was, is the five-horse Guarana. So Guarana has won four or five starts, one, run second once in the cotillion, trained by Chad Brown, ridden by Jose Ortiz. Everything you, you like to see in an even money shot. Uh, speed figures in the mid to high 90s, all there. Uh, she even had a good prep race at seven furlongs on a sloppy track at Churchill Downs. So why do we want to beat her? How, how are we going to beat her? Take a look at the seven horse, Mia Mischief. Her speed number is 117. In the end, she, she her closing figures is 75. So she doesn't have as much energy left typically. What that tells me is she's going to be motoring on the front end and she won't have enough left in the tank at the end. Gorana uh, motoring on the front end. She's got a little more left in the tank at the end, okay? So let's clear this out and look at the rest of the field and I'll tell you who we like. Shift on over and before we get to Bell's the one, who is our choice, I want to take a look at Amy's challenge. 130 pace figure. She doesn't have that much left in the lane usually and that kind of speaks to the numbers that you see here where she's ahead and then she kind of tires out. So there's gonna be a lot of pace on the front end here. And we actually caught Bell's the one the last time she won it, 13 to one here. Bell, I think we got a 19 to one overseas, if I'm not mistaken. Bell's the one has the opposite running style, 76 and a 101. So while it still might be tough to run down a classy horse like Guarana at uh, odds of six to one or higher, we like Bell's the one. Her speed figures say that she's, she has the class to contend with these. And when you add the class to the, the, the pace dynamic, I think Bell's the one has a real big shot here. Working bullet workouts. Uh, record at Keeneland is two out of three wins. She's finished three out of four, either first or second at this distance. Let's go Bell's the one. Moving on. Race six. This is the Shakertown Sprint Five and a half furlong on the turf, grade two event. We're going to swing for the fences here, and we do this every once in a while. Uh, in an instance like this, I'd encourage you to play maybe uh, each way. But for those of you that like to gamble a little bit, smart remark is lined at 50 to 1, might end up going higher. And what I, this is one of the toughest races of the day. So there are a lot of horses that can contend here, but there were a few things that, that kind of stood out to me with Smart Remark. Now, she, Smart Remark looks like he's been prepped up. So what I mean by that is, if you take a look at this race on April the 19th at, at Keeneland, it, it was run off a layoff on a muddy main track and an uh, optional claimer race. And Smart Remark didn't do any running. He lost by 23 lengths down here. Okay. So that led to a grade two event, this turf sprint race where he ran a 94 speed figure. So he was 30 to one that day. Where did that come from? Well, you look, that, you look and see that he was prepped. They hardly showed an effort in that race before. And they were setting him up to run in a grade two race because that's where the money is. Then let's fast forward. We'll go through a couple of other races of no consequence, a couple of uh, allowance races, optional claimer. And we'll focus in on this race from August the 2nd from Ellis Park. Optional claimer, speed figure of 73, nondescript. Lost by six lengths. Okay. Runs next in a grade three sprint stakes, and I keep writing over the number, but a grade three sprint stakes, that's the race they're targeting here. And a 98 career high speed, speed figure at odds of nearly 70 to one. Take a look at who the jockey was that day. Rafael Bejarano, who's the jockey today? Rafael Bejarano. Now, take, now we'll take a look at June 27th a nondescript running line in an allowance race, 74 buyer uh, speed figure, lined at 50 to one. For those of you that see what I'm getting at, he, he looks kind of interesting, right? 
So for those reasons, we're going to take a chance with Smart Remark at 50 to 1, maybe higher, maybe lower, depending on the site you use. We'll fast forward to race number eight. This is a mile and a 16th on the turf. Grade one, Coolmore, Jenny Wiley Stakes for four-year-olds and up, fillies and mares. And once again, we're going to start by looking at who the favorite is, and that's Rushing Fall, six to five for trainer Chad Brown and jockey Javier Castellano. Uh, amazing record. She's won nine of 12 with two second place finishes. Uh, her record at the distance is three of four. Her record at, at the racetrack here in Keeneland is four of five. It's hard to knock rushing fall, right? Um, we're going to try to though, because we don't really like to pick favorites here. So we're going to look at her early pace figure at 113 and compare it to the six horse, Jolie Olympica pace figure of 121. So that tells me that both are going to likely go to the front end here. Jolie Olympic is stretching out from a five and a half furlong race. So I see a, a pace battle going on up front with a six to five favorite and a five to two shot. So typically in this kind of scenario, we'd go with a, a closer that closes from as far back as we could find. But we're going to take another approach here. because the closers in this race don't seem like they have the, the class. Uh, one horse that does have the class though is Juliet Foxtrot. We can take a look at her speed figures here. She's, she has the ability to run a, a triple digit speed figure. Trainer Brad Cox is that, has been having an excellent year, 24%. Uh, odds of eight to one, so that's pretty enticing. A record at Keeneland, this racetrack, uh, two for two. Uh, I'm sorry, one of two and a second place finish with a 100 speed figure. All pretty good. What, what I like best about Juliet Foxtrot, and, and it looks like she is going to be part of the pace battle as well, but my sense is, since she's not as fast as those other two, that she's going to be taken off the pace, and she has the ability to rate. If you look at this race back, way back here, she rated from 9.5, 12 lengths off to win going away by 4.5. If you look at her race from December 1st with this 101 speed figure, same thing. She was off by five and she ended up making a move and she ended up in the end, she lost by a length and a half. But I see a scenario where Fo Juliet Foxtrot gets taken off the pace here and is in the right place at the right time to run down both favorites at the end. Uh, it's some pretty juicy odds. So she also looks prepped up here. She was the favorite, as you know, uh, in her last start. That was her first start since December 1st, and she, it, the running line says she came out start and was swallowed at the end, What tells me that it looks like a perfect prep for this, where the trainer was using that grade three race to set her up for a grade one win. So we're going with Julie, Juliet Foxtrot in that race. Finally, we're going to get to the feature race today. This is the Bluegrass Stakes, a mile and an eighth on the main track. The Toyota Bluegrass, this is typically a prep for the Kentucky Derby, and it happens in April. Now we're, we're in July, and it's still a prep for the Kentucky Derby. So we'll take a look at a few horses that are going to be running in the Bluegrass. The, one of the favorites is going to be Swiss Skydiver, who's a filly taking on the boys for the first time. She's coming off a win in the Santa Anita Oaks. Uh, her speed figures are high up there as compared to some of the others in this field. Our Lightning Basin, uh, Man in the Can. So Swiss Skydiver's got a pace figure of 114. She is likely to be on the lead. Our trainers got a pretty good record so far this meet. And while Swiss Skydiver does have some class, she's never run against the boys, so she's untested that way. The horse that we're gonna go with is Art Collector. And before we get to Art Collector, I'm going to show you part of the reason we're going to pick him is this one horse, Shivery. Shivery is likely to press Swiss Guy Never for the lead with that 113 speed, speed figure there and the rail. So Swiss Guy Never is not going to have any easy time on the front end. I look for a scenario where Shivery goes, Swiss Guy Never goes, and it sets up for somebody that comes from just off the pace. Let's take a look at our selection art collector who is lined at five to one. It's a pretty generous price. 
and he's coming out of a triple digit speed figure race where he beat Shared Sense, who came back to win. He demolished Finnick the Fierce, who was facing again in this race. As I clear this out, I'll show you what I really like about our collector. So this is his most recent start, and we see the, the times. Let's focus it on that. The final time of, well, he ran a mile in 135 and two, and a final time in 141 and one. Pretty fast time, especially considering the fact that that early pace was pretty slow. Uh, we're gonna look at two other races that day that were run at the same distance. Uh, now they were claiming horses, so the quality isn't as strong, but this gives you an idea of the kind of race that Art Collector ran there. Similar early pace, but the late pace completely fell apart. So based on the, the class here isn't as tough as Art Collector was facing, granted, but they ran an Art Collector's race. They ran the mile in 135 and two. That's 16 lengths faster at the mile mark. And they ran the mile and a 16th at 141 and one. So this is 20 lengths slower than Art Collector's race. Okay, let's take a look at another, another race from that day at a mile and a 16th. Now these are claimers of a slightly better quality. Once again, similar pace, maybe even a little faster earlier. The mile in 136 and two as compared to 135 and two. So at the mile mark, these older claiming horses were already five lengths behind the three-year-olds. And by the time the race was over, the final time in 142 and four, they finished up eight lengths slower than Art Collector did. And Art Collector was really under a hand ride. He, he wasn't asked as much as uh, you might think. So for those reasons, we like Art Collector in the bluegrass. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. Just to close it out, uh, thanks again for listening. Remember to leave comments and some feedback in the YouTube videos. Uh, look forward to hearing from you and really look forward to winning some money this weekend. Next weekend, again, as a reminder, Saratoga opens up Friday, and we've got Monmouth Park and the Haskell Stakes on Saturday. Uh, this is James, your U.S. racing expert, once again signing off, and good luck on Saturday's races.